What's up, everybody? This is Jose Gagnon, the random guy 75 here again. And we are now on episode 13 of season 3 of Everything Wrong with Thomas the Train Commentaries. So now we're doing Trust Thomas. We're gonna get the things going. You already know how they roll. We're gonna get into this episode right away. Yeah, man. You already know how the things go here. So we're gonna do it right away. As you. So we can get the things going and just see what goes on. Woo! Tank engine was feeling bright and cheerful. It was a splendid day. Good morning. He whistled to some cows, but the cows didn't reply. Never mind, said Thomas. They're busy with their breakfast. <laughs> Next, he saw Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Care for a race today? But all Bertie could say was, Ouch! That's another hole in the road. I'm sorry, Bertie, smiled Thomas. Thomas was still in good spirits when Bertie arrived at the next station. Bad luck, Bertie, said Thomas. Now, if you were a steam engine, you would run on a pair of reliable rails. Huh, replied Bertie. The railway was supposed to deliver tar to mend the road two weeks ago. You can't trust a thing that runs on rails. I run on rails. You can trust me, Bertie. I'll see if I can find out what's happened. I'm surprised Sir Topham Hatt didn't hear, you know, the news about the tar being... <clears throat> You know, having to be, you know, bringing the the tar to the to the to the roads two weeks ago. I'm surprised you didn't hear about you know that message at all. Especially because Birdie said that you know one of the steam engines was supposed to bring it you know to the to the road you know to the road area. But I also think it's the person that's like in charge of like the road vehicles. Like I don't know if like you know if there is a person in charge at all. Like of all the road vehicles in the show. Like we never we never find out if you know there's like a person like a, a boss person that's in charge of all the road vehicles. We just know that you know that there's a boss for all the trains. But not about the road vehicles, so who knows what's going on with, about the thing for the for the tar for the roads. Like who knows, like who's not getting the message and this and that. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so much craziness. So much craziness that you can't really understand it too well. Thomas left Bertie and made his way along the branch line towards the big station by the sea. James was snorting about in the yard. It's too bad. Percy goes to work at the harbour and I do his job here, there and everywhere. Take that! Ooh, groaned the truck. Just you wait, we'll show you! Gordon laughed. I'll tell you what, James, if you pretended to be ill everywhere, you couldn't shunt trucks here or go to the quarry there, could you? What a good idea, agreed James. Look, here comes Thomas. I'll start pretending now. Thomas was sorry to see the engines looking miserable. Cheer up! It's a beautiful day. Yes, grumbled Gordon, but not for James. What's the matter? He's sick, replied Gordon. Yes, he is. I mean, I am, uh, stutter James. I, I don't feel well at all. Don't worry, said Thomas kindly. I'll help out if you're ill. When you choose just to, uh, you know, pretend to be sick because you don't, you don't feel like doing your work. Just because, you know, you're just sick and tired of being at work or for some random reason. And doesn't James know that if, if, he, if he pretends to be sick that the boss man will find out and then he'll get in trouble with the boss man? But he doesn't think of that. He's just like, you know, I'm just going to do what Gordon says because, you know... <laughs> That's what I do because, you know, since I'm Gordon's best friend, I'm just going to do what my best friend says. And I don't really care what the boss man's going to say to me pretty much. Like, they don't think about the consequences that, you know, they're going to get. <laughs> oh, these, cra these trains are crazy, man. They're crazy. <laughs> 
But that's exactly like something that would happen in real life <laughs> about someone, you know, just pretending to be sick or, you know, just like faking an illness just because they don't want to, you know, do their responsibilities and stuff. Even though they know that it's really important of them to do it. They just, you know, they try to make up an excuse. <laughs> So, you know, it's just so, so relatable, <laughs> pretty much. Gordon and James sniggered quietly to each other. And I'm also surprised that Thomas isn't realizing that James is joking about it. He's just like, oh, are you sick? Hey, I'll do, you know, I'll go and do your work for you. Like, you know, why is, you know, why is Thomas not thinking that, you know, that, you know, James is just, you know, tricking him like Thomas should be realizing that you know James is just messing around with him because <laughs> he knows you know he knows James like by now ever since in the very first season so I'm not sure why you know he just chooses you know to think that James is actually sick some of James's trucks were coupled behind Thomas and he steamed away to the quarry. The trucks were still cross. We couldn't pay James back for bumping us, so we'll play tricks on Thomas instead. One engine is as good as another. But Thomas didn't hear them. He collected all the snow from the quarry and then set off back to the junction. And these trucks are just like pretty crazy and messed up too because, you know, they choose to make you know, cause problems no matter, you know, what goes on and, and and who no matter who they're with. They're just like, you know, like, we don't matter, you know, whoever's, you know, you know, pulling us or, or bringing us to the places. Like, we're just going to cause problems because that's what we choose to do is just cause problems for the trains and stuff. That's like, you know, their main thing that they, they do is just causing problems and making accidents happen for these poor trains. <laughs> oh man like I said man the characters and you know in this show they're just pretty crazy and they don't you know they don't understand about consequences pretty much at all danger lay ahead now for our plan giggled the trucks go faster go faster Slow down, called Thomas's driver, and applied the brakes. Poor Thomas stood dazed and surprised in a muddy pond as a toad eyed him suspiciously. But my buffers, muttered Thomas, the day started so well too. Duck pulled away the trucks and Edward helped Thomas back to the junction. Suddenly Thomas remembered about the missing tar. He told Edward all about it. Instead of telling Edward he should have gone to tell Sir Topham Hatt about you know the problem that Bertie was having with the roads and also the tar but instead he just chooses to tell Edward about it for some random reason. It's like the boss man's the one that needs to know about you know these problems not you know another one not you know, one of Thomas's friends, you know, because why do they care that, you know, Bertie's having, you know, problems with the roads? It's the boss man that needs to, you know, you know, find out about the bad situations that, you know, the trains and the road vehicles are having. That's strange, said Edward. A truck full of tar has been left at my station. That must be it. Driver will make sure it gets to Bertie now. Later, James spoke to Thomas. I'm sorry about your accident, he muttered. And so is Gordon. We didn't mean to get you into trouble. No, indeed, spluttered Gordon. A uh, mere misunderstanding, Thomas. All's well that ends well. Just then, Bertie arrived. He looked much more cheerful. My road's being mended now. Oh, I am glad replied Thomas. Thanks for all you did. Now I know I can trust an engine, especially if his name is Thomas. Gordon and James puffed silently away to the shed. But Thomas still had company. 
Well, well, he sighed. What a day for surprises. The toad, who was looking forward to a ride home, noise. I wonder why that frog just decided to, you know, just jump on top of Thomas for some random reason. <laughs> He's just like, oh, a train, and he just like jumps, you know, and he's just like hanging on top of him for some random reason. <laughs> That's crazy, man. Super crazy. But that's it for today's Thomas the Trains Everything Wrong With commentary episodes. Hope you enjoyed. And like I said, for tomorrow, I'll be doing, you know, some gameplay, recording me of doing some gameplay of the Mario 3D World, the Bowser's Fury DLC. So hope you're all looking forward to that. And we'll see you next time, which is tomorrow. Have the greatness. Enjoy the amazing, you know, enjoy this amazing night watching the videos. And we will see you all tomorrow's, everybody. Keep it going. And you already know the things go here. Yeah, man. We're going to get the amazing times going every day on this channel. And that's how I always roll, man. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. Hey now, man!